Now, dial one for customer services, two for complaints, three for headache, four for frustration, five for throwing your phone across the room, which I did yesterday. <laughs> Keep going. Mm, sound familiar? Well, new research has found that Britons are more likely to complain about the service they receive from call centres than the Americans, believe it or not, the French or the Germans as well. And hard to understand operators annoy us much more than being kept on hold. You are on hold, you are on hold, you talk to someone who doesn't know um, what you want or who can't help you and you're on hold again and you're on hold all the time. So I don't find them helpful. Terrible, boring, deeply irritating. Um, is there any way of getting rid of them? It doesn't matter where in the world you live. I'm from Canada, I've had it over here, I've had it in Canada. You phone up and you, you know, please hang on while we find a live person somewhere. You know, when you're speaking to someone who um, you have problems of understanding anyway, you get really irritated and unfortunately you take it out on the other person on the phone. And somebody says your call is appreciated, you know, and you're just left hanging on. It's like you get handed from one menu to the, ne the next and you end up with the same thing you started with. It's, it's just misery. Yes, it is <laughs> just it. misery. Professor Merlin Stone is a customer service expert from the University of the West of England, and Sue Carroll is a columnist for the Daily Mirror. Hello to you both. Good morning. morning. It makes our life hell, doesn't it, these call centres, don't you think? So, misery is the word. Yeah, it is. It's just so annoying. Life's just so, so bad with these call centres. Mm. Why can't people just pick up a phone, answer a phone? It's all about number crunching. It's all about making their lives easier and our lives more mm. complicated. Yeah. Professor Stone, one wonders, I mean, why do companies bother with call centres, given that they they seem to annoy everyone almost universally. Well, the answer is very simple. The net reflector study has another important statistic. If you ask people how they want to contact customer service, 70% of people or more say the telephone. Yeah. And the reason is, of course, that if you remember, I'm not sure if you're old enough to remember, what it was like trying to contact customer service people 30 years ago. You had to go to a branch uh, of an electricity shop, you had to go to a bank, and today it's much easier. So what we're seeing is a massive social change where we're all, in general, able to contact big companies more easily, but it's not perfect. So in my other life, I'm a hybrid <laughs> academic and a consultant, so as a director at WCL, I was in Denmark working on a call centre project yesterday. What you see is the hard work done by companies trying to meet what is actually a very basic requirement which has just been articulated. But it's hard because they're learning. Um, there's a, a sort of other study which is done about call centre op. Uh, managers and what it reveals is an enormous variety in practice all over the world yes. at the merchant study and it also shows that lots of people don't quite know what they're doing they're having to cope with a massive demand placed upon them by the business to meet this basic customer need to talk and they can't all hack it and there's resource limitations and so on mm -hmm. which is why we suddenly get this problem with outsourcing to try and meet the cost yeah. issues well, and it doesn't work outsourcing because that, that means that a lot of the calls go to india and i was having problems yesterday getting through purely because the line kept going dead so i'd hold for 10 minutes mm -hmm. and then suddenly the line would go and when i finally got through we were both find it quite hard to understand each other. Well, I think so by the, the stage, by the time you've got through that, you've been through all of those yeah. levels of frustration and, you, you know, you threw your phone across them. I quite I know, understand I it. I know, Too much but, hilarity, <laughs> I have to say, actually. I'm well, I think a lot of us have done it. But you then get someone who doesn't understand what you're saying and that just is enough to break you. You yeah. just can't take any more. It's, it's particularly bad because they don't understand the English postcode convention. So you give a postcode, and in England, people say, oh, yeah, I understand, that's Katie, whatever. Mm. You have to re-spell it, often using the, you know, mm. Tango Romeo stuff. Yes. And then you give it an English telephone number, and that convention's understood. But that's the but, fault but, of the company, I mean, it? Because it doesn't happen exactly. all the time. Exactly. Is that then damaging? Is that counterproductive for the business, then? Because it is putting a bad impression in the mind of the consumer. Yes, it's dreadful. And uh, the fault lies with people who've moved too fast and haven't imposed tough enough standards uh, on the staff that are recruited for these centres because they're doing it to try and cut costs too quickly rather than to improve customer service. Well, I think your expression resource limitation <laughs> says it all, really, <laughs> doesn't it? Very consultant's phrase, I'm sorry. We pay for the service as well. We, we pay for it. Know. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Mad, doesn't it? Some are quite good, we have to say. Yeah, some, some, are, some, some actually are actually do sort good, you out so. rather quickly. I mean, yeah. the thing that gets me yeah. is when you have to call back and then you get someone totally different yeah. and have to go through the whole rigmarole well, all again. over again. Yeah. Or you press the wrong button. Oh! But and you'll square, square one. one. Yeah. I know. But, but the interesting thing about the Net Reflector study is it shows that the English-speaking nations are particularly vulnerable to this outsourcing issue because, of course, mm. there are large numbers of countries in the world that speak in, uh, English as a second language, mm. but not perfectly. South Africa is doing very well at the moment in outsourcing, 
because, of course, there's a very large number of people who speak English pretty near perfectly, right. and we can understand a South African accent That's much more easily than an Indian one. Mm. But the good thing about these things is that these are countries that need the money, so we must be really, yeah. really careful yeah, of course. That's a good point. not to push against the principle. The principle is an excellent principle. But get it right. Sharing yes. the load across okay. the world. Remember, if you go to a shop in the UK, you've got about a 50% probability of being served by somebody from one of these countries as well. Mm. Do we go against that? No, okay. we don't. No, we don't. Okay, okay. So well, be careful well, listen, about that. We must end it there, yeah. but thanks very much for the time being. Mm. I'm sure a lot of our viewers are going to have yes. a, an awful lot of views on <laughs> their experiences with call centres. Do let us know. Well,